Good morning, John. What's that? What's that? It is the final uh, first edition. This is actually the thing that will be in stores version of my book, and it's pretty, and it's beautiful, and I love it, and it's terrifying. John, I've been talking to a lot of press people lately, and they have so far invariably asked me a question about whether there's a sense of competition between you and me. Am I going to compare the success of my book to the success of your books? Is there some element of me wanting to write a book because, like, my older brother did it and I want to prove that I'm an author too? In fact, on Tuesday I was talking to a reporter from the Wall Street Journal and when she got to this section of her notes, she it sounded like she was kind of begrudgingly asking me this question like she knew what the answer was going to be. And here, here it is. It has never even occurred to me that my book will sell as well as any of your books. And not because it's a ridiculous idea, which it is, but because I don't, I don't imagine my success in relation to your success. Why? I've been thinking a lot about success lately because there's a lot of frustration and burnout in the YouTube community, I think. And I've been thinking that we can often forget that uh, success is a different shape for different people. Like, we each imagine it to be a different thing. And it also changes shape. There have been times in my life where I have changed the way that I imagine the world, and in those moments, the shape of success has changed for me. And sometimes those have been hard moments, but I think they've always been good moments. And one thing about success is that just like any shape, you can't see how big it is unless you put it in relation to something else. One of the most common ways you do this is you compare today's success with how you were doing in the past. But we also put our success in relation to other people's success, or at least our conception of their success. And I think that happens for reasons obvious and not a lot with siblings. But, and I can't tell you why, it hasn't happened with us. It's not because we're not competitive. Like, put Hank and John Green on a mini golf course and Cross your fingers that everybody comes out not bleeding. I think to some extent these videos uh, got better because we were trying to outdo each other, but not in a way that was like, I want to be more successful than you, just in a way that like, I want to make a better joke than you. That's very different from like, measuring the value of our contributions to the universe in relation to each other, which is kind of what this artificial and now somewhat kind of gross sounding concept of success really means. I honestly feel like every time something good happens to you, it's a good thing happening to me. That is a gift. And it's a gift that was given to me, I think at least in part, by this community and this project. And it is a really valuable gift. I'm very thankful for it. That reporter from the Wall Street Journal also asked me if you were planning any projects or anything like that to promote the book, and I told her, that I didn't, I didn't know, but like, probably was my guess. But what I didn't expect is this, or any of this. John, thank you so much. Thank you for being the absolute model, like the platonic ideal of what a supportive older brother can be. Thank you for your support, not just now, but for my whole life. And your support of this thing that I made, which is hard and weird and different and, uh, and I'm really excited for it to be in the world. John, I'll see you on Tuesday, and then not long after that in New York City for the release of my book on September 25th and the start of our tour. <sighs> End screen, there will be a book tour September 25th in New York, then Boston, Canton, Ohio, Chicago, Kansas City, Missouri, Indianapolis, Milwaukee, Denver, Los Angeles, San Diego, Santa Cruz, and Bellingham, Washington. Also, check out the new Nerdfighter Backpack. Limited supplies available now at dfdba.com.